So today I'm going to create a Google class in Google Classroom. I'm going to set it up so you can see how it's done. And then I'll give you a couple of tips and things that I did when setting up my Google Classroom. Some things I wish I knew before I tried it out with my first class. And then I said, oh no, I, I don't want that. And I didn't know how to change it. And then it took me a long time to figure that out. So I'll just give you a little bit of advice. You can take it or leave it. But the first thing you want to do is go to Google Classroom. So click on the nine dots, which has all your Google Apps. And this may sound obvious, but if you haven't used Google Apps a lot, you might not know that there's a lot more underneath there. You can keep scrolling and scrolling. And if you click on this, you can get a huge page of more apps. So sometimes you might have to look for it down here and click on it. Anyway, so you're going to go to Google Classroom. And I already have a bunch of classes. You will just have a blank white page if you've never created a class before. Um, you can see the classes that I've created that have technology. Okay, so now the first thing you want to do is go to this plus sign on the upper right corner. It says create or join class. Now, there is one staff member that I've been working to solve this problem for where when they click on this, they're saying that they don't see create class, only join classes. If they're a student, they can't create their own class. We're working on solving that problem. We haven't solved it yet. Um, the person's Gmail account is listed as staff member, so I'm not sure why that's happening, but we're going to fix it. If anyone else does not see create class, let me know. Send me an email uh, so I can know that you're having the same problem. Now, you're going to click create class, and then you can make your class name. Now, my class names, when I first set up my classes, I wrote Portland, Washington, Gates. You know, I gave the name of the class, Waverly. But now I realize that I really should have called it tech because every teacher that they have did that. So now they see Washington, 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 and one's from humanities teacher, one's from me, one's from math. So um, you should include your subject in the name. I didn't do that when I first set mine up, as you can see here. Then I realized that that was a mistake. When I created music and tech, I actually did music and tech five, six. So I'm actually going to go in here and, and alter those later. But right now, let's go back. So I'm going to write uh, test. I'll use capitals test class and I'll put technology, right? The subject section you can put. Um, I put the class, the number 802, 801, 401, whatever your class number is. You could even do the name, all right? Subject you can put tech, but it doesn't necessarily it doesn't show, even though I did technology um, as a subject, it doesn't show later when it's listed. So you do, that's why I have to go back and put technology up here. It's a little note. And then room number, you can put your room number of my classroom. But again, that doesn't show also when they're looking at their classes. So you hit create. There are different ways to add your students to that class. Now you can individually add your students if you know all of their emails. You have a list of their arts and letters Gmail accounts in front of you. You can just type that account and they will be added. However, there's an easier way which is to go get the class code and send an email through Jupyter Grades or through the Arts and Letters Gmail. You might want to send it through your other email list. You just tell them you've created the new class and students should click on the plus sign in their account and it says join class and when they click that it'll tell them to enter a code and they put this code. So this test class code is BJ25JY Something that is not obvious and I found out the hard way is this class code will change after a few months. It expires. They say it's for security. So if you get a new student after a couple of months, as has happened to me, and then I give them the class code that I wrote down or made a little doc of, here's all the class codes, right? They enter it and it doesn't work because now there's a new class code. So I have to go back into my classes. Let's see. Boom. And, and click on the class that I need to add that student to, and I see, ah, it's a different code now. Hopefully that saves you guys some frustration knowing that in advance. Now let's go back to our test class. Like I said, you could add 
students individually. So you have four tabs at the top here. You've got stream, which is if you want to type a message, you can. It's great for morale during these times, but it can be dangerous for older middle grades kids who like to type inappropriate things and pranks and know that everyone's going to see it instantly, even if they get consequences, even if you delete it a day later when you notice it, or even an hour later, everyone has seen it. So just keep in mind, there is no censorship on that and they can type anything. But if you type a message, uh, then all the students will see a little box like this and they'll be like, hey, what's up? And they'll just drop their comment. It can be useful if you want to do a, um, a feedback piece where someone's answer is put up or someone's idea and then everyone can comment on it or critique their, their artwork or whatever you're using this for. You put these comments. What I do is I turn these comments off because I don't want the students to comment until I'm sure that they're ready for that and they're on the right maturity level. So we'll go over that in a different tutorial. You've got the classwork. This is where you create your assignment. You've got people. Here's where you add your students. Now, again, you can invite students by giving them this class code, right? Or you can click on here and invite them like this. Now, the people that I have in my Gmail account that I've emailed before on my Arts and Letters account, their emails will pop up. If you've never emailed your students before, they're, type their name, nothing's going to pop up. But I've emailed Andy before, so I could add him to this class. And I could uh, keep typing different you know, adding different people. And then when all the students are in there, I could click invite. It will send them an email saying, click this link, you're in the class. To me, it makes more sense. You're going to be sending them an email anyway. Just copy the um, code, go back to the, the class page, go to your email, compose a message, address it to your students. Something like this, okay. Right, there you go. Type your personal message first, if you prefer. Now, of course, the students, especially the lower grades, and the, it's really the parents that will be doing this, um, they don't know how to get to Google Classroom. So you've got to give them more instructions, like log in to Google or your Gmail account. So, um, you know, you guys can make your, your letters and then just in case, you know, if this didn't show, display correctly up here, which it, it actually looks a little crooked right now, I might um, copy that and just uh, put it in normal text down here. Hold it, make it bigger. Okay. Thank you, etc. Sincerely, blah blah. Okay. So that now you have my suggestion for how to send it to them. But if you just enter the emails of the students, if you have those emails in front of you, and you click on people again, reminding you, you click here. You click the email of the student, okay? And the student's email will appear here. Keep in mind, when you first add students, I mentioned this before, that stream thing is on, they will automatically be able to make comments right away. This is something I, I don't really like about Google Classroom, and I actually went to Google for a, a seminar or conference, and I asked them while I was there because it was partially about Google Classroom. How can I have it automatically off until I turn it on? They said you can't. It's automatically on. You have to wait till they join your class. And then as soon as you can, go in there and mute them so that they can't make comments. That's what I had to do with all of these classes. And I did this, you know, how many times? One, two, three, four, six, eight times where I had to put up with kids writing ridiculous stuff in the comment when they first logged in and were like, oh, look, we can make a comment. And then I had to immediately go and delete all of those and mute them so they couldn't comment anymore. And here's how you do that. So we'll go to people. Here's all my students. Now, if I just want Amani to be able to com comment, I can go to actions, click unmute. Now she can make comments. If you check them all, when you first start, they're all unmuted and they're all making comments. So you first thing you do once they've all joined, you cannot do this in advance. Once again, you have to wait until they join and they may comment when they first join. 
So you select everyone that's joined so far. So you mute those kids. So now they can't make comments. As the other half starts joining, they're still going to make comments until you go and mute them. Then you're going to go to your stream uh, that shows the comments. I can't show you because there's no comments here. And you're going to click on this on each of them. And there's going to be a delete. And you're going to delete that comment, delete that comment, delete that comment. Okay. I don't think this will be as much of a problem with grades 1 to 4. But grades 5 to 8, the older they get, the more they're tempted to write something silly. Fifth graders and sixth graders is more like... You're, what up, Brooklyn? I love pancakes. And then as you get to 7th and 8th grade, you know it's going to get worse than that. And I don't have to say it on this video. All right, I hope that was hopeful, uh, helpful, sorry, and hopeful in these times. Um, if you have any questions, uh, send me an email and I will, you know, help you troubleshoot or answer whatever questions you have to help make this transition to remote learning a little less stressful. Hope everyone is feeling safe and healthy and getting accustomed to the remote learning experience. Talk to you soon. Have a great day.